Okay, so again, every time you guys see me write BPD, binomial probability distribution, okay, that's what I'm referring to. And, you know, a binomial probability distribution has to basically um, deal with or, or go along with all those requirements. So a fixed number of trials, right? Um, what else? Independent events, um, two outcomes, success or failure, and then the probability of success has to be the same per event per trial. So if I have that, then I want to determine, what if I'm asked to find the mean, mu, population mean, or the standard deviation, sigma, population standard deviation of that scenario, mu n times p. So the mean of a situation of binomial probability distribution in particular can be found, the average outcome can be found by taking the number of, you know, sample space, the number of trials, times the probability of success. Small p is the probability of success. Um, sigma, the standard deviation can be found by doing n times p times q under the square root. q is the probability of failure. It is the complement of p. So let me write that. n is number of trials. So you have it. Small p is the probability of success, which should stay the same if it's binomial. And then q is the probability of failure, which is always the complement of p. Not, you know, really um, a difficult situation. Um, let's say that I have eight multiple choice questions on a test. I'm randomly guessing each question. And there are um, five total, uh, you know, selections for each question. So five total answers, right? So A, B, C, D, and E. Um, let's find the mean and the standard deviation. So, I mean, I didn't write everything out, but... First of all, is it binomial in form? I always want to think about, is it binomial in form? Because if it's not, then I can't use this stuff. I have to use other stuff. So does it follow those requirements? And in my head, I do this. You know, those four requirements, does it follow those four? Do I have a fixed number of trials? I have only eight multiple choice questions that I'm randomly guessing on. So yes. So my fixed number of trials, N, is eight. Two, are they independent? So me selecting, you know, some, so let's say me selecting B on question two, is that affecting me selecting C on question three? If I'm randomly guessing on each, it should not. So they are independent, right? So boom, second requirement is met. Three, um, do I have only two outcomes, success or failure? Yes, success would be getting a correct answer, um, correct. And then, so therefore, failure would be incorrect, right? And again, you know, success in a binomial probability distribution is not necessarily the good part. And, you know, failure is the bad part. Success is basically defined as whatever probability you're dealing with. Um, and failure is, you know, whatever the complement is. So you could define either, um, you know, correct as success and failure as incorrect or whatever. Um, hold on one second. So last one, last requirement would be the probability of success is the same per question. And the probability of success would be the probability of correct answer. And that is lo represented as small p. And the probability of getting a correct answer, if there are five total possible answers, only one of them out of the five is correct. So therefore, the probability of failure, which is q, is 1 minus p. Um, and let's do it in decimal form. This is 0 0.2, would be 0 0.8. 1 minus 0.2, which is 0.8. I want to find the mean and the standard deviation of this. What is the mean? Well, the mean is just n times p. Take your sample and multiply it by your um, probability of success. So, um, in this case, just 1.6, right? 
1.6 is my average. So if you think about it, on average, if you have eight multiple choice questions that have five possible answers, and you um, are randomly guessing on each one, you know nothing, the on average, we would expect you to get 1.6 correct-ish, which sounds about right, you know? That sounds potentially like what it would be. For me, I'd probably get none, right? Because I have no luck. I'm a horrible guesser. I need to know my stuff. <laughs> my standard deviation, um, N, uh, what was N? 8 times P, which is 0 0.2, <laughs> times Q, which is 0.8, and then I'm going to take the square root. So here, let me do that on my calculator. 8 times 0 0.2, 8 times 0 0.2, times 0 0.8. I take the square root of that, and I get... 1.13, let's do 1.1, approximately 1.1. So there we go, right? My mean is 1.6 and my standard deviation is 1.1. Um, think about this again, this is gonna pop up for you guys. The range rule of thumb also applies here. What are my you know, significantly high, significantly low, non-significant scenarios, right? So. Two standard deviations, so the mean is in the center, right? Two standard deviations below the mean. You take the mean and you subtract two standard deviations, which in this case is 1.6 minus twice 1.1. 1.6 minus 2 times 1.1. We'll deal with that after. Um, this is going to be the cutoff for the non-significant from the significantly low cases. These are the non-significant, and these are the significantly low. These are significantly high. And then two standard deviations above the mean, 1.6 plus 2 times 1.1. That's going to separate the non-significant, or the typical scenarios, from the significantly high. So let's do that. 1.6 um, minus 2 times 1.1, which is, and then 1.6 plus 2 times 1.1. So negative 0.6 and 3.8. <laughs> Oops. Negative 0 0.6 and 3.8. So these are my uh, situations that separate significantly low from significantly. So what does that mean? So is it unusual, which, you know, significantly low or high, to get uh, six correct answers under the condition, right? Under the condition that you're randomly choosing per question and that there's only eight, right? And you have five total answers under those conditions, right? You don't have nothing on this test, you're randomly guessing. Is it unusual or is it significantly low or high to get six correct answers? Well, there are two ways you could do this. Six is above this cutoff value, two standard deviations above the mean. Six is up there, right? In this like area of my number line. So therefore, yes, it is significantly high. I would say it is unusual and it is considered significantly high to get six correct answers if I'm randomly guessing on um on you know on eight questions, which makes sense. Getting six out of eight correct if I'm randomly guessing it makes sense that that would be unusual. The other way to do that is to actually find the probability of getting six of them correct. What is the probability of getting exactly six questions correct out of eight if I'm randomly guessing on all of them and there's five possible answers? This is a binome PDF where n is eight, p is 0.2, and x is six. I'm going to my calculator. Calculate that. Um, second bars binomial PDF. NPX. So eight comma point two comma six. Let's see what that probability is. Oh, I forgot that I have eighty four. Eight point two and then six. Paste. What is that? Very very small. Point zero zero one. Approximately. 
0 0.001, which is 0.1%. Is on the calculator again? I didn't see it on my screen. Mm -hmm. I, just saw the, I just saw this page. I didn't see the calculator. Okay, give me one second. 0.1% chance of me randomly guessing six correct out of eight possible answers if there are five, oops, five total answers per question. So we would say this probability is less than 5%. And any probability less than 5% is considered unlikely. Or we can look at the range rule of thumb and say, well, six questions correct is, you know, on the high end, above two standard deviations, above the mean. So, yes, that's considered unusual or significantly high. And two ways to kind of analyze that situation. One of them is using the probability and one of them is using the range rule of thumb. But I just want to refer back to that, too, because you're going to see that. Again, the idea was how do, I, how do I find the mean and standard deviation of a binomial probability distribution? They're not hard formulas. Where do you take it from there? And now you can you know, use it to think about other things.